Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. I opened the Quran and uh, it opened to the last section of Yasin. So Yasin, which is said by our, our beloved uh, prophet to be the heart of Quran. He said it in this way. He said, everything has a heart. And he said, the heart of the Quran is the Surah Yasin. So what teaching there, what, what great teaching. First of all, that everything has a heart. Um, that's great news for us to, to know that um, everything has a heart, meaning it has an essence, it has a, a connection to, to God and, um, and, and is returned to God, continuously returned to God. So um, the Quran itself is continuously streaming from Allah and, and returning to Allah. And um, on this day of Juma, it streams out in this way, and it uh, Allah wants you to receive these verses, inshallah. So I, I will read them in English. Um, the last section. This Eudabilan mina shaitani ajim, this mina man irahim. If we grant long life to any, we cause them to be reversed in nature. Will they not then understand? We have not instructed in poetry, nor is it proper for him. This is referring to Rasulullah. This is no less than a message. In other words, a message from God and the Quran making things clear. They, that it may give admonition to any alive and that the charge may be proved against those who reject. See they not that it is we who have created for them among the things which our hands have fashioned, cattle which are under their dominion and that we have subjected them to them. Of them, some carry them and some they eat and they have profits from them and they get to drink. Will they not then be grateful? Yet they take gods other than Allah to help them. They have not the power to help them, but they will be brought up as a group. Do not let their speech then grieve you. Truly, we know what they hide as well as what they disclose. Does not man see that it is we who created them, him from sperm? Yet behold, he stands as an open adversary and he makes comparisons for us and forgets his own creation. He says, who can give life to bones and decomposed ones? Say, he will give them life who created them for the first time for he is well versed in every kind of creation. The same who, for, who produces for you fire out of the green tree, when behold, you kindle with it. Is not he who created the heavens and the earth able to create the like thereof? Yea, indeed, for he is the creator, supreme in skill and knowledge. Truly, when he intends a thing, his command is be. And it is. So glory be to him in whose hands is the dominion of all things. And to him will you be all brought back. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. What, a, what magnificent verses. I mean, the Quran um, is so magnificent, so elevating. Um, so illuminating and um, inshallah we have so many lessons from every ayat but uh, I'd like to go over them we can go over them one by one so if we grant long life 
to any, we cause them to be reversed in nature. In other words, they, they, humanity, each human being, we reach a peak of, of development, physical, and then spiritual coming uh, later. And um, you can say in the fullness of humanity, and really we could say that the spiritual peak in the, in the friends of God is reached um, really at the end of their life. So uh, the end of their life, the, the, the best moment, and we can make that as a prayer, may the end of our life be the best moment of our life. In other words, may we not uh, grow and then descend. We want to continue ascending and, um, and, and blossoming in, 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 in Allah. Um, but what we are meant, there's a lesson here it says, do we not understand? Oh, do we not understand that that everything returns to God? So that what we think of as old age is really a sign that, that we belong to Allah and we return to Allah. In fact, we, we say that uh, if someone passes from this life, and it's one of the the prayers or affirmations that, that we say. Um, so we are meant to understand things from life itself. Life is the great teacher. Everything is in our life, but how to interpret it. And this is what the book of Quran can give because it, it's almost like a, a lens that focuses in on aspects of life. You, you might even say like a microscope um, and and so meaning comes forth from life. Meaning comes forth from events. Otherwise, we could live life and uh, only on the physical level. That's possible. And, and extract no meaning and see no meaning in it and become uh, despaired. So, um, but what struck me is that although these signs are here, the evidence is here. We, the evidence does not always speak that. The Quran speaks that. It says, will they not understand? But we, we will look at these passages of things. We will look at events, and yet we are not taking the deeper meaning of them. And so um, this is something that we have to remind ourselves of. And when it says here, we have not instructed the prophet, although it's understood to be him, it doesn't mention him directly, nor is it suitable for him. Uh, and the Ibn Arabi alayhi salam says that the reason is because prophecy is in, it, it uses, I mean, it says it uses metaphors. So, um, and also it's, it's, how do you say, translated, it transmits from the human mind, um, transmits from the human mind, not directly from the divine mind, from the, from, from the divine essence. And so it, it has like, almost like a partial truth, but not the, the, the direct light. The light is not as clear. And it says, this is no less than a message and a Quran making things absolutely clear. So here, the lesson is also to say that um, divine revelation is of a different nature and we have to treat it as such. And that means the revelations um, from every tradition, every sacred revelation is um, divine. And, and has the divine message for us and the divine benefit. And that it goes on to say that it may give admonition to any alive and that the charge may be proved true against those who reject. So um, it is both um, a healing balm, it is both uh, the milk and the nourishing milk of knowledge and it is also has the, the warning in it and, and um, the medicine, which is medicine. We have to think of 
admonition and warning as medicine uh, for our own souls too. It's not just for whom we think or the most deviant. We, every time we read Quran, there's medicine in it uh, for us. And then the, the, the instruction points to <clears throat> what is created. See, they not that it is we who have created for them among the things which our hands have fashioned, cattle which are under their dominion. See that it is not we who have created for them. So again, everything in creation is created by Allah. We, we cannot create anything. And this is a very important message also for, for our time. When, um, when we have been given so much um, agency in, and uh, we see it operating in science, and, and the ability to, you know, create these artificial intelligence and uh, the ability to uh, explore the, you know, the, both the, the hidden, what was previously hidden in creation uh, and to report on that, to, un to begin understanding how things function. But if we do not know that, it is still Allah who is creating everything, then we can get lost, seriously lost and destroy ourselves. Uh, there's a beautiful um, passage of Quran that Sheikh Noor translates um, that it is Allah who creates you and creates the things that your hands create. So, the, what we normally attribute to ourselves, such as art or technology or any, anything that, that we make, um, we attribute to ourselves. We should attribute it all to Allah and, and give thanks to Allah for everything that is here on earth, including ourselves. And then Allah goes on to say, and that we have subjected them to them to their use, to their needs. And they say some carry them and some they eat. So uh, just detailing two functions that we receive out of um, the, the creatures who are under our- I'm gonna go to the park so we can take our heart. Mm-hmm, okay. Um, and they have profits from them and they get milk to drink, will they not then be grateful? So here is the key word, is, is gratitude. And so both knowledge, uh, wisdom, and gratitude, uh, that we can live and be the most intelligent, be the most functioning. Uh, but if we don't have gratitude, then um, again, we miss the point of life. We, we, because everything is here for us to turn, turn back and offer thanks and, and praise Allah. So the real point of life is praise, praise and, and gratitude and, um, and understanding, we might say, and um, wisdom and kindness and then everything that flows from there. So then it, it goes to say, yet they take gods other than Allah. So even though we don't, we, you know, we say, oh, well, there's no polytheism today, or we, you know, we know that God exists. And, but these are speaking also on subtle levels. So on, on subtle level, if we, are not grateful on subtle level, when we forget on subtle level, when we think that it's from cause and effect or on subtle level, when we think we did it, then we are attributing other gods and, and, and we are one of them. Um, but they have not the power to help them. So this is a, a, the reason we would say something is a god is because it has power. 
So if it has no power, we wouldn't call it such, or we wouldn't uh, attribute that station to it. So Allah is affirming that they have no power. Nothing has power but Allah. And then the, 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 the revelation turns to the prophet and said, do not let their speech grieve you. And this could of course be said also to the friends of Allah, uh, who I've seen Effendi in difficult circumstances, sometimes in society, um, where you could tell that he was not recognized and, um, and, and, and he was not appreciated in the way that uh, he should have been. And it was painful for him, not for himself. It was painful because the, of the ignorance, because of him witnessing the ignorance of these people and their plight. And then the Quran says, does not the human being see that it is we who have created him from sperm, from so from what is tiniest, we could say from the seed. Allah also gives us the example of the seed, you know. How is it, did you create the seed? When you put it in the ground, or are we the creators? And are we the bringers of life that makes the seed grow and sprout? Uh, and then that argument is turned for our own self. So yes, we come from a seed and uh, considered a, a, a lonely seed that has nothing in it, but it has um, Allah's mercy. Um, and then it says, <laughs> the worst is that even though we are created and guided and, and fed and provided for and protected and um, sent all good, by the beloved, and yet then we become even an enemy, an adversary. Could that be, I mean, could one imagine anything worse? Um, and he makes comparisons for us and forgets his own creation. He says, who can give life to bones and decomposed ones? So this is the state of, of someone who has uh, lost lost their connection and, and lost the light who mocks and um, denies what is the, in front of them, which is the miracle of life in, in themselves and all around them. And then Allah affirms, he, the one will give them life who created them for the first time. And he is well versed in every kind of creation. And uh, the one who gave them life in the first place. So this is something that you know science is trying to come to. Where the, what's the origin of life? It's quite fascinating that we're uh, really in. We're almost in a, a, a. It's almost like a laboratory of um, of human. Um, types of, of, of human stations that were searching for the origin of life. And then they, you know, did it begin in the ocean? Did it begin in, oh no, it began in other planets or the aliens brought it or, um, yeah, but then who created them? So uh, th there's never a way to, um, to counter Allah's own proof or to deny Allah. Allah is really undeniable. And then Allah says the same, who produces for you fire out of the green tree, when behold, you kindle with it. So here, this is the tenderness of Allah. This is the mercy of Allah. So even to those who deny, there is still that effort to say, no, but look, look, mercy comes to you. You're cold, you, have, you, you want to cook your food, you gather wood, you make a fire and it bursts into flame. How does that happen? I do it. This is what Allah said. I bring you all mercy. I bring you relief. I bring you sustenance. 
is not he who created the heavens and the earth able to create the like thereof. So this is the, the renewer of life, the one who, um, who can create life and then create it again, and then have it pass through death, the door of death, and then bring it forth again. Yea, indeed, for he is the creator supreme, Bala, Wahuan, Halako, Alim, in knowledge, the one who has all knowledge. Verily, when he intends a thing, his command is be, and it is. What glory is that? What, who can claim that? So no one can claim that, not even deniers. When he intends a thing, his command is be, and it is. Well, maybe this was Pharaoh. This is the, the ultimate arrogance as portrayed by Pharaoh or by Nimrod, who think that their command is equal to the command of God. So glory to him in whose hand is the dominion of all things. And that's when Abraham asked Nimrod, well, uh, he said, you know, who it, Abraham was arguing with Nimrod in order to bring light into his consciousness. And he said, um, who, who gives life or death? Allah gives life or death. And then Nimrod countered, no, I give life and death. I can uh, tell someone, to, you know, I have power, in other words, over my, my subjects' lives. And then Abraham said, but can you bring the sun up from the, the west? Who brings the sun up from the east and sets it in the west? Can you do that? And Nimrod obviously realized, no, he can't. So here Allah says, glory to him in whose hands is the dominion of all things from the tiniest um, fly, the tiniest gnat, the tiniest atom and molecule who makes all of that um, alive and uh, existent. And who will bring it all back? Who brings it all back? Fa subhanallah, fa subhanallah bi yadihi malakutu kulu shay'in wa ilayhi turja'un. So let's have our, our moment of, of, of silence and salawat. And this is the hadith um, to which I opened just prior to Juma. It's hadith 36 from the 101 diamonds gathered by uh, the Shaykh Allah Dar, Ibn al Alayhi Salam. I bestowed upon you all good things. Muhammad the Messenger. May Allah immerse him in peace once revealed. On the day of resurrection, the descendants of Adam will be brought like lambs before Allah, who will say to them, I bestowed upon you all good things, including spiritual gifts and graces. What have you done with them? Some will answer, we gathered them all together. We made them fruitful and they became more abundant. Allow us to return to earth and we will show them to you. Allah will reply, you must demonstrate true abundance to me here and now, or else you will be directed to the fire. This hadith comes from the transmission of the noble companion Anas. May Allah be pleased with him. Alhamdulillah, you must demonstrate true abundance to me here and now. Otherwise, you will be directed by the fire to the fire, the fire of purification, the fire that would remove. This is um, 
this is the burning that we know ourselves from a remorse burning that we know from any spiritual pain or emotional pain that um, removes conventional thinking, that removes illusion, uh, that removes separation, that removes the sense of independence, uh, uh, that removes arrogance, um, that fire, that which is a, it's called a fire, it's a, it's a, it's a cleansing, it's a, an alchemy. And um, what does it mean to demonstrate true abundance here and now? It means what is in the heart. It means that we must demonstrate, we must have it in our heart. Everything that we experienced on earth, and of course we do, because our heart becomes the imprint of our life on earth, of our every experience is encoded in our cells, in our bodies, in our heart. And so it's like we become a record, uh, a book of our own life. And uh, they're writing, we are writing that book every day, every moment. How awesome, how awesome. And may we be writing the most beautiful book so it's not going back to earth to find things there. There is no separation from what we did on earth and ourselves. We are in a sense um, forming ourselves. We are uh, providing what will be what we present to Allah at the end of our life. Um, so in a sense, this hadith also refers to the Quranic uh, verses that we read, you know, where Allah points out all the gifts uh, given and, and, uh, and exhorts us to uh, be grateful for them, to recognize, to be, and be grateful for the source, be grateful to Allah, and also to use them in the best way. So uh, these are things we have to contemplate. How do we use our day? How do we use our moments? These are gifts, not just uh, food and house and uh, companions. Time is a gift. Time is it's one of the great gifts. We have time. We have a limited time. We are soon departing. What do we do between now, this moment, this Juma, this Friday of Shaban before Ramadan, and the time when we will depart without doubt. So how can we employ ourselves in the most beautiful way? Um, we have many, many teachings on that. We are in a tarikat. We have already been gathered up by divine, the divine bounty, the divine mercy. We've been called and guided to this path of excellence this path of wisdom and this path of realization and this path of fruitfulness. So um, we, we are called to contemplate. So each one of us in, in, in their own way called to see how we can make the best use of our life and our time here on earth. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Allah. May you guide us, may you be our guide, um, and uh, may you be our intimate counselor um, in, in, in all of our affairs. May, may you not let us stray. May you uh, keep us always in the direct path, which means the, the direct connection to you and, and, and guide us to be the most beautiful creation and and to take that to receive and use and multiply what what you give us the beloved jesus alayhi salam uh, told the story of the the master who who left and and gave three servants uh some you know let's call it a piece of gold or something and uh one servant put it under a rock and said, well, this is the best way to take care of it. Um, 
and one servant um, lost it, and one servant sold it and had it um, multiplied with with what he received. He he bought a, a flock of sheep, and from the flock of sheep, he fed uh, many people, his family, and many people. So when the master came back and asked the three what they had done, um, he, he, of course, felt that the person who had sold it and uh, produced the flock of sheep to which he could feed his family and many people was, was the most um, well-guided, the one who hid it under a rock. In other words, you do nothing. You just hide it away. You don't make use of your life. You don't see it as a bounty to um, to multiply. And the one who lost it, the, the one who is completely unconscious and heedless, and the one who invested it, the one who used their life to bring uh, true goodness uh, to himself and others is, is the full human being. So may we, may we become all uh, together, may we encourage each other, lift each other, and um, on this path of of the true human being, and each become. May Allah grant us to become each of us an insan kamil, a, a, a true and fulfilled human being. Amin, amin, amin. Blessings on your shaban. Then um, we have, I think, one more. Juma before before the Ramadan. I think we have one more Juma. Yes. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Oh, mashallah. Allah, please grow us and make us beautiful, make us pleasing to you, Allah. We, we have no power in our own. And to realize that is so humbling, so illuminating, so opening, that we give up our feeling of power, except what you have given us, that it is all yours. It comes from you. Our destiny comes from you, oh Allah. Please give us the best of destinies. Our, our shapes, our, our spiritual um, attributes come from you give us the most beautiful spiritual attributes the most beautiful forms oh Allah both spiritual and, and material Allah please increase us always in beauty and nearness to you and and your love oh Allah please may may we be true to love may may we be true to our pre-eternal promise may may we be people of, of faith and um, and trust. I mean, and, and bring us uh, in, in beauty to the Ramadan and, and give us the most glorious and beautiful Ramadan you have ever bestowed upon us, O oh Allah. And may we complete these wonderful days of Shaban with uh, salawats and praises on our tongues and, um, and gratitude and um, everything that you love, praising you, praising you, praising you. And, and, and sharing all the goods you have bestowed upon us with, with other beings and walking softly on the earth and speaking softly and right, knowing that we are always in, in holy ground. We are always in the Valley of Tuwa. We are always in the Mount of Hira. We are always in the, in the, in the great masjid uh, of this creation that you have created for us. Amin, Amin, Amin. Through the secret heart of uh, Effendi, the secret heart of Noor, the, the secret heart of Tir Nodin, his mother, Amina Taslima, and to the secret hearts of all your friends, your mothers, your prophets and messengers, secret heart of your beloved, supreme beloved, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa blessings on the Ahli Bayt and the companions of Fatiha. Allah, sayyana, 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 Wallahi said no Muhammad Sabi wa Salam. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah Hirabdilani. Arahman Irahim. Maliki Omidin. Iyakanogudu Wayakanastain. 
ایک دینا سراد مستقیم سراد آن دینا آنم تا آنیم آرام مغربی آنیم ولادانی آمین 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 خوب